Okay, peoples of the internet, and welcome to your eighth, seventh, eighth, I think it's your seventh tutorial, I might be wrong, in programming games in C++. So today, the main focus of the tutorial is going to be on handling input, but we're going to do a couple of other things. I'm not just going to do handling input, we're going to do something fun with it. So it's going to require us to do a couple of things. First, I'm going to make this a... Uh, what do you want to call it thing? <laughs> I'm gonna make this square that we made last time. And basically, what I'm gonna do is I'm de gonna declare variables called x and y. And in front of both the 500s, all of the 500s, I'm gonna put a y plus. So basically, now wh whatever we change a value of x and y that we declared up here, that'll move the square now, which is going to help us. We're also gonna need to declare you could you could actually make that a float if you wanted. We'll do that. We're then going to declare x vel and y vel. They stand for x velocity and y velocity. They're very useful when programming. So now we're going to get to the meat of this tutorial because I know you guys love meat. It's not. This it doesn't sound sexual at all. Um. So what we're going to need to do here is we're going to need to change change this up a bit um, I generally find this is a little bit easier to manage without all these millions of uh, switches in you could use switches that's actually fine but I don't like to so let's go to turn that into an if statement okay so now we're going to handle key pressing events so what we're going to say here is if event dot not event, event dot type e equals sdl underscore key down. This is going to detect whether we've pressed a button on the keyboard. And then we're going to de de detect uh, which was the actual button that the event happened at. So you're going to type in all these horrible words that don't mean anything. And then for now, we're going to handle the up key because that's a nice key, everyone loves the up key. And then we're going to have to declare a few boolean variables. So they're going to be up, down, left, right. I should point out, any of these kind of suggestions that you're seeing there, they're from other projects. It is really annoying how Coblox does carry them over, but I'm afraid that's just something we're going to have to live with. Um, so yeah, up, down, left, right, boolean variables. And we're just going to copy this, except we're going to change this to key up. I think, yep. Um, basically, what it's going to do is, if we release up, it's going to go into this if statement, this if statement here. If we press up, it's going to go into this. You'll notice that the if statements inside these key up and key downs are actually the same, and that's because we're only getting the key that handled this event up here we don't actually need to change what these if statements are doing. So what we're going to do here, uh, we're going to put up equals true. And then very important as uh, I mentioned earlier, I forgot to do it up there, we're going to put our break statement in. And then when it's l released we're going to set up to false. And then we shall break. So now we're going to want to do this for down, left and right, so we're going to copy this out. More times, just going to change these keywords down, down. Shouldn't take two seconds. Left, right, right, and now we can just copy that into here and just change the values to false. Okay, so now we are handling handling events in SDL. Let's just uh, quickly compile this, just to make sure we've got no errors at this point in the program, so that we are good to m move on. Okay, so we've got no errors, which is all good. So now we're going to get into handling these events to move our square around. It's not insanely difficult. Uh, what we're going to do is, in the draw function, you can make 
some people would prefer to put a function, the draw function called like, or in a game loop in main called logic, and have all this kind of stuff running in a separate function. You can do that. It doesn't. It's absolutely fine. Doesn't matter. But I like to uh, have my what do you call? <laughs> Forgot what it's called. But I like to have uh, my logic just raw in the draw function. So what I'm going to say here is if up key. And then basically we're just going to do this for every single key. Down key, if left key. Oh no, hang on. We just want up and down, don't we? On where the projects I've called them. That, that's why. That's why I just called them up, left, down, up, down, left, and right. Okay. So what we're going to do now is we're just going to say if we're going up. Because I what I said about the weird inverted y axis, we're gonna set y velocity to negative one. If we're pressing down, we're gonna set y velocity to one. If we're going left, we're gonna set yep, if we're going left we're gonna set x velocity to negative one. If we're going right, we're gonna set x velocity ooh, got a few too many spaces there. We're gonna set x velocity to positive one. This may go a bit fast because of you know, how quick you got our frames updating but should not be too bad um, and then there's one final thing we're going to do uh, you can put this wherever you like in the game loop it really isn't going to make that much effect at all x plus and equal to x velocity and the same with the y y velocity so if we run this now I'm hoping really hoping that we get this right and there we don't get it. We've not got any errors, which is all cool. Now is it going to work though? Ooh, that's r that's weird. <laughs> wow. Um. Well, I didn't I didn't mean to create this. <laughs> I have to admit, actually, I kind of like this. This is this is pretty cool. Anyway, um, that's not exactly what we wanted it to do. Um, I know what we've done wrong. It's because we need to set these where the zeros are. We also need to set them to the x and y values, like so. So we've got that all set up on an x and y, and then also we need to put an else statement here saying x val with zero. Oh. That's not a zero. And y val equals zero. Right, okay, so we should have fixed those little errors. You can get rid of that else statement if you want, actually, and it will create nice, a quite nice effect where you don't have to hold down the keys to make it move. If that's the effect you want for your game, then that's fine. I'm just teaching you like, how to do this kind of thing. And what the? Wow, that's really cool, actually. That looks like 3D ish. I like how I'm getting a million errors and I'm just going, oh, that's cool. <laughs> what have we done wrong? I think we've done, ah, oh, yeah, look, there we go, we've put that in X. Should have been a Y. And we'll change these to ELSIFs, I think. Okay, guys, David again, sorry about that. Um, It took a long time, well, I say a long time, just a couple of minutes. We need to figure that out, but that was just a couple of minutes that we didn't need. Uh, so yeah, here's the solution, and that's the rest of the recording. So there you go, that's how you basically move a character. If we increase the numbers of, of XFL, we'd uh, get um, we get him moving faster. Uh, there's also something called frame-independent movement, which would mean uh, we could make him move the same amount, no matter how much your game is lagging, getting low FPSs. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. I hope you haven't been too annoyed at me making all these mistakes and thank you for watching uh, next time we are going to be covering getting mouse input how we can get the position of the mouse and click on things and that's pretty much it for this tutorial so thank you for watching and goodbye